I, female 32, have been dating my boyfriend 36 for 9 months. He has two little children who love going out to eat. We go out once a week and each time he happens to forget his credit card to make a payment. I'd obviously end up paying since we had the kids with us, but honestly it left me broke this month and the month before. I just received my payment for my second job, part time. We agreed to go out together with the kids and I even sent him a text reminding him not to forget his credit card. He laughed it off. We ordered dinner at the restaurant and he let his kids order lots of new stuff on the menu, which was pricey. Before we started eating, I mentioned his credit card to ensure he didn't forget it. He looked at me, shocked, and then started searching his pockets for a while. He then looked at me in a sorry way and said, Guess I forgot it in the other pair of jeans that I thought I was going to wear, then asked me to foot the bill just this time. The food was on the table, but I didn't even get a bit. I grabbed my stuff and got up. He freaked out, asking where I was going. I told him I wouldn't be paying this time again and to enjoy his dinner with the kids. Then I walked out. He called me later and absolutely lost it on me. He said he couldn't believe I'd walk and leave him and the kids in this situation. I said I wouldn't pay for him and the kids' food every time. It's unfair. He said he forgot, forgot. He yelled like that and that I didn't show sympathy for him and the kids and he had to cancel and go home with the kids hungry since he couldn't pay right there and then. We got into an argument and he's been mad at me since then, saying things like how he needs to look at how I'm treating the kids specifically and how I was willing to let them go hungry with my selfishness. Am I the idiot? Once is an accident, twice is a coincidence, three makes a pattern, 36 times means you are the idiot and you do need a reality check about this relationship. I mean, I have a friend who loses his debit card constantly, but he just Venmo's his share or does grab the bill the next time, right? If he had his phone to call OP, she could have asked him to transfer the money then or paid OP back after each earlier time. If someone was truly forgetful but always paid me back within a couple of days, I wouldn't worry too much about it. OP, he's been manipulating you weekly for nine months to pay for dinner for him and his kids. Why do you even agree to do weekly nights out if you can't afford them and he's never offered to pay? Are you serious? You know he didn't forget. He knows he didn't forget. And everyone listening to this knows he didn't forget. Fool you once, shame on them. Fool you multiple times, you're the fool who keeps falling for the same trick. Why are you with this guy? Holy smokes. Interestingly, he says you made the kids go hungry. If he genuinely forgot his credit card, wouldn't a simple solution be for him to go home, get the card and return to the restaurant? That you were not paying means the kids go hungry is proof that he had no intention of paying. It's proof he didn't forget. You were always his credit card. He's also a crap parent for not budgeting to feed his kids. I'd be tempted to just ghost him and after a couple of weeks finally tell him, Sorry, I forgot to tell you it's over, but I'm petty and spiteful. All of this after only nine months, and you've already spent the last two months broke because of it. So basically, he started financially abusing you after seven months. Sweetie, you need to dump the loser. He will bleed you dry for the rest of your life and belittle you. Run like you're trying to qualify for the Olympics. Here's what happened. My son's name is Robin. It's just those five letters. It's not a nickname. The mom of one of the kids in his class is convinced his name is Robert. She volunteers a pickup. I'll drive up and she'll go to get my son yelling, Robert, Robert. Now, I brushed it off the first few weeks because learning the names of a bunch of different kids is hard. I tell her when she came back over with my son, actually, his name is Robin. I've said this almost every single day for over a month now. Finally, last week I saw her at a school function introduced myself and said, I'm Robin's father. You might recognize me from the pickup. By the way, his name isn't Robert. Her response confounded me. She said Robin is a girl's name. It can be either male or female, but it's way more common for boys. So what? And it's not a good nickname for Robert. So she'll call him his real name instead. I tried to correct her since Robin isn't a nickname, but she wandered away. The next time she walked up to my car, I got annoyed and said, I'm here for Robin. R-O-B-I-N. She did it again. On Friday, when she called my son Robert, I asked her what her problem was in a very loud voice. I shouted loud enough that a teacher ran over. The volunteer mom ran away and I tried to explain. The teacher looked at me like I had three heads and said she would get my son. I got an email later asking me to come in on Monday for a meeting. 
I don't know how to approach this. Should I apologize for yelling? Should I demand an apology for the constant disrespect? Should I ask the mom not to be allowed to volunteer anymore, or at least not get my son? I feel like I tried to be reasonable, but maybe I was too sensitive. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Email back. I look forward to meeting with you to discuss a volunteer parent bullying my child and an appropriate course of action to prevent this from continuing. But honestly, what is her problem? Does she do this to any other kids whose names she decides are inappropriate? I agree. I'm a teacher and we try very hard to honor student names. However, the parent in this scenario is trying to push her gender bias on your son and on all of you. I would go into that meeting prepared to accuse her of discrimination and, if the school backs her up, of them supporting her being discriminatory against your son. Her reason for calling him Robin is that she believes it's a girl's name. You attempted to clarify politely and she doubled down and continued. Now it's harassment and it's gender bias. Be sure to use those terms and ask the school if they support her discrimination. What is her problem? A guess would be that she's very fixated on old school gender roles and she is, for some reason, convinced that Robin is a name that only girls can have. Her version probably is that this poor kid has cruel parents who set him up for being bullied and she's just trying her best to help him out by using his real name. And she probably also thinks that he hates being called Robin. She thinks it's feminizing a boy. That is her problem. It's her problem. Exactly this. To give the teacher the benefit of the doubt, the stranger look might not have been directed at OP, but rather an, oh God, why is this parent volunteer messing stuff up again kind of thing. This is flabbergasting. It's not a girl's name. It's his name. So even if you named him Jennifer Priscilla and nicknamed him Glamour Bunny, she doesn't have the authority to give him a new name. Update. Am I the idiot for yelling at another parent during pickup? My wife reached out to Charlie's mom on Facebook to ask if the weird pickup mom called Charlie by a different name. According to Charlie's mom, the weird pickup mom calls Charlie Charlotte, and Charlie is her legal name, not that it matters. Charlie's mom is not a fan of this, but she assumed it was a mistake and didn't want to say anything because she knows pickup is hectic and confusing, and there are a lot of kids with similar names. My wife shared my story, and Charlie's mom agreed to email me this information, so I could bring it up in the meeting if needed. Charlie's mom also said she would reach out to some other parents with questions about the weird pickup mom. Many of these kids went to kindergarten together, but our son didn't, so we don't know many of those parents very well. Charlie's mom was really nice and helpful, and she and my wife even set up a play date for our kids. So, regardless of how the meeting turns out, one nice thing came out of this. Meeting and pickup update. So, first of all, my wife came to the meeting with me, which was hugely inconvenient for her, but I'm glad she was there because she doesn't tolerate BS. So we got there, and the teacher and principal were there. My wife didn't let them say anything until she'd gone over everything with the weird pickup mom about our son, Charlie, and potentially other kids. The principal was really surprised. The principal said the teacher would talk to the other mom. I apologized for yelling, and we all shook hands. A pickup that day, weird pickup mom wouldn't look me in the eye. She didn't call Robin Robert or by his actual name. She was quiet the whole time. Sorry, it's also anticlimactic. Thank you for the update and for adding how the meeting went. I call that a win. It sounds like she was put in her place and the unwanted behavior has ceased. She won't be calling children whatever name she chooses, blatantly ignoring the parents all the time. So I call it a win. I'm petty and I would have acted super friendly and greeted her with wrong, bizarre names, calling her arugula or oregano or whatever, lol. I'm glad the meeting went well, but I disagree it's a win. The fact that this woman is still not calling your son by his name is a problem. As kindly as possible, I would email the teacher that this volunteer is still refusing to call your child by his name. OP, don't give up. In my family, I'm the only one close to financially stable. My parents earned enough to have a middle-class income, but my mom was a big shopper and my dad would blow his money at the casino. Now my parents are at an age where they can no longer work and they mainly live off my mom's pension and the money I give them every month to support them. My brother went into dance after college and his job after school was working as a retail associate at a luxury store. He has the same problem with his money where all the money is spent on clothes and nights out. 
My brother married this guy who's 20 years older than him. My brother is 26 and this guy is in his late 40s. Initially, this guy framed himself as the rich older guy, but that isn't the case. Here's the thing, they're now asking everyone to donate money so they can make a fund for their future children. First of all, I find this whole thing skeevy as heck. But financially, these guys are going on trips left and right. They constantly lease and swap out cars. So when they asked me for money, I told them no. They tried to guilt me, and I said no. Then I got a call from my mom about taking out a home equity line of credit, and I was like, absolutely not. I told my mom these guys, if they cared about this so much, they could save up for it, and I forbid her to give money to my brother and his partner. She's like, okay, then I'll give a little bit. I tell her, no. I tell her I'm the one that pays their bills, and if I find out that they gave a cent, I will cut them off as well. When my brother and his partner discovered this, they were very upset with me, and I told them I didn't care. They're now calling me phobic, etc., and saying that I'm ruining their happy life and preventing them from having a family. Again, I told them I didn't care. They could start saving money themselves, but I was not going to spend a cent of my money to finance their lifestyle. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's not phobic to not want to give money to extremely financially irresponsible people. I do think you're on the fence about telling your parents what to do, but seeing as you also pay their bills, I would have done the same. No offence there since she can't and didn't technically stop them from chipping in. You're not an idiot if you tell someone you'll stop supporting them financially when they still have trouble paying their bills and want to throw money out of the window. Yes, when I pay your bills, I will hold you responsible for reasonably managing your money. If they want to have kids, that's their business. But they need to get their financing in order first instead of expecting you to fund it. And since your parents rely on you to make their bills, they shouldn't be giving money away to anybody for any cause. So why should you refinance your home to support two adults who can party it up themselves? Don't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. Honestly, you should probably wean mom and dad off their reliance too. They're entitled and need to learn to live within their means. They're also probably pretty young, have decades of life left, and should be supporting themselves. Don't wreck your future to save them from their mistakes. Your brother is a brat. They want a child but aren't willing to sacrifice fun. Time to learn. Do you really think this future children's fund will be a one-time thing? Nope. Once the baby comes, then they'll want you to help for nursery costs or diaper money, or now they're short because daycare is so expensive, etc, etc, etc. Cut them all off. My 37 female sister, Missy Teen, is actually my older sister's sister. My older sister and I share the same mother and I'm the product of an affair. My stepdad raised me and maintained a relationship after he divorced my mother. My stepfather passed away almost a year ago. I was supporting his household. Missy's mother hates me and always says, You are not my child sister. I supported the household, including her older son, 24. When my stepfather passed, I tried to maintain contact and help as much as I could. But after the funeral, they cut ties with me. I would try to call Missy and it would go to voicemail. I maintained the contract on the phone and paid for the service. I did notice if the phone was still being used, but I just figured her mother didn't want her talking to me. Missy reached out this week, asking if I would help them move because the mother's boyfriend is acting crazy. I offered her a place to stay and she stated, We just need money to move or one of your rentals. My mom hates you. I asked her if that's why she didn't reach out until now, and she said, my text and calling don't always work. I said my offer to stay with me was on the table, but I couldn't give more money. Missy's mother called me, saying that I'm trying to steal her daughter and I should want to help them. I offered her a job managing my rentals, but she said she would never work for me. I ended the call and went for a run. I came back to floods of calls and texts from my family asking why I was refusing to help my sister, saying, you won't allow your gay sister in your home? saying I'm an idiot and want to see them homeless. I didn't know my sister was gay, nor would I have ever cared. I sent my sister a message saying, I cannot help you or your mother. I will maintain your phone until you're 18, but you will either have to pay for it yourself or pay me. No matter what, I love you for who you are, but please never contact me again. My older sister said I'm being an idiot because I'm bitter Missy won't come live with me. The reality is I actually never wanted her to live with me. 
I just really do not want to support her mother, brother, or anyone else. Am I the idiot? Edit. Missy's mother has hated me since I was a teen. I wasn't welcome at the wedding because she felt I would set a bad example for the future. I'm assuming this was related to my mother's affair. She's called me every name under the sun, and I let it go until I was about 24. I snapped, and I did say some unsavory crap, but I have apologized. However, she has maintained that attitude, you are a witch and I hate you. My biological father wasn't the greatest, but he left me a hefty trust. This provided the house Missy and her family lived in until my father died. Her mother decided to move and asked me to sell the house and give Missy half. The day I said no, contact stopped. My older sister spends a lot of time with Missy, but will not give her a single penny. She will buy her an outfit here or there. I called CPS to do a welfare check. They said they would investigate. My older sister has doubled down on me being an idiot. I entered the call by asking her to move out of my rental or start paying rent. Not the idiot. You tried to keep contact with them and they cut you off without reason. And then only contact you now for money? Screw that. I don't see how Missy's mom can say you are not my child's sister and exclude you from the family but still expect you to give them your hard-earned money. They are in a desperate situation, and instead of immediately taking you up on the job offer and housing, they decide to be choosing beggars. It's their fault, not yours. Tell your older sister and every single family member who calls you to scold you, I offered them a place to stay in my home. They said no. However, I'm so glad you can take them in or give them money. They must be so happy with your offer of help. I'm happy you can help them right now. I'm sure they will be even more grateful as they don't hate you. Your mental health will be much better without them. Time to cut the strings entirely, in my honest opinion. No more money, no more contact. They are takers. You had no obligation to support them at all. Update. You all are right. I have allowed some of the most toxic people into my life. None of these people are my family, including my older sister. I changed my number this morning. Then I spoke with my mother, and I explained to her that if she gives my number to any of them, she will be cut off as well. Thank you all.